the let's go exercise. This exercise will teach the dog that when there is pressure or tension on the leash, he is to turn back to the owner and release the pressure. Step one, place food on the ground. Don't let the dog get it and wait until he stops pulling towards it. When he turns to look back at you, click and treat. You are clicking the choice of turning and looking at you. Problem solving. If your dog will not stop pulling toward the food, make your positive interrupter noise, pat your leg, or do something fun to encourage your dog to come with you. Once the leash is loose, click in reward. If your dog continues to have a tight leash and is not coming with you, then use gentle even pressure and keep moving in the direction you want your dog to go in. Once he gives in to the pressure and decides to come with you, click and treat or simply just treat. Sometimes the clicker gets in the way if you're not used to it. It is perfectly okay to just feed for the correct behavior. Let's go. Let's go. Now a few clips with my puppy Twix. He does know the let's go cue, but I have never practiced it inside my house. Step 2. Once your dog understands that releasing pressure is what you want, take a few steps with your dog and then click and treat. Now you're teaching your dog to move with you. Step 3. Make small changes to start proofing the behavior. This time the food is just on the ground and not in a bowl. A small change to the environment can make a huge difference. Training tips. Never assume that your dog knows a behavior. Test your dog in many environments to help them generalize the behavior. If your dog fails in a different environment or slightly different situation, then just go back a few steps and retrain the behavior. It's not a big deal to have to retrain or help your dog in a new place. It will not take much time at all before your dog is able to transfer learning to every situation. I always ask myself questions when my dog fails to do a behavior I've asked for. Did he hear me? Was there something else happening when I asked for the behavior? Are the distractions too high? Is there something in the environment that my dog is worried about? Is my dog feeling okay? One time I asked my dog to sit and she did not sit. I asked again and she did not sit. 
I asked a third time and she still did not sit. She's a six-year-old husky mix that knows how to sit. So I just let it go and when I got home from our walk, I noticed she had a big wad of gum stuck to her fur on her hind end. I am so happy that I did not get mad or frustrated with her. It was probably painful to sit. So look at the situation completely before you make a judgment that your dog is being stubborn, willful, or defiant. In my opinion, dogs are never any of those things. There is always a reason why. So go back and ask yourself those questions. Was the thing I wanted him to come away from more exciting than I am or more rewarding than the treat? If it was a sit I asked for, then I will just wait a little and then ask again once I have his attention. However, if I've asked for a let's go and my dog did not seem to hear me, I just move the other way using gentle even pressure until he moves with me. Step four, practice the let's go cue around a variety of things. I'm using another dog in the next few clips. Practice the let's go cue around a variety of things. Dogs, bushes, food, dog toys, water dish, people, things. Be creative and use things that will benefit your dog. Loose leash walking, food to the mouth exercise. Step one, when the dog is at your heel, click and feed a treat directly to the dog's mouth. Repeat many times. It is my preference to feed the dog with the hand closest to the dog. If the dog is on my left side, then I feed with my left hand. If the dog is on my right side, I hold the leash and clicker in my right hand. The reason I like to feed the dog with the hand closest to him, it will prevent him from moving in front of me to get the treat. It allows me to have the clicker away from the dog's ear. However, when I am walking multiple dogs, I put the leashes in the hand that is closest to the dog. I only walk multiple dogs once they all know how to walk on a slack leash. Training tips. Start all training in the house. Increase criteria slowly. Give a lot of verbal praise. If your dog is having a difficult time focusing, Use higher valued treats, real meat or cheese. Move further away from the distraction until your dog is able to focus again. Keep training sessions short. Do not train loose leash walking on your entire walk. 
Train a little, let him sniff. Train a little, let him sniff. Train a little, end session. In on a positive. Stop before your dog gets frustrated or bored with training. Stop if you get frustrated. Loose leash walking, food on the ground, exercise. Step 1. Move away from your dog and when he catches up, click and place the food at your heel. Step 2. Move away from your dog again and when he catches up to you, click and place a piece of food on the ground at your heel. Step 3. Repeat many times. Training Tips Change directions frequently to keep the dog following you. Use a high rate of reinforcement in the beginning by rewarding often. Do not put a cue to this behavior yet. I personally do not have a verbal cue for loose leash walking. A tight leash cues the dog to release the tension by stopping, slowing down, or turning around to look at me. Place the food on the ground and do not drop it. Stand up after you place the food on the ground. Loose leash walking with eye contact, focus, and distractions. Now that your dog can loose leash walk, it's time to start challenging your dog and practicing around distractions. Start with distractions off to the side and loose leash walk up the middle. Make sure the dog is still below threshold and able to concentrate. If your dog can't concentrate, move the distractions or the dog further away. If you're working on more eye contact, you can start with walking backwards. There are more distractions here than just toys. There are sounds, people, a lake, ducks, and dogs passing by. Before asking your dog to work in a new place, make sure they are comfortable in that environment first. We worked in this environment before adding more distractions. Next, move the toy distractions closer and walk the dog around them. If you're wanting more eye contact and working on healing, start by walking backwards. If you just want a loose leash around distractions, walking forwards is just fine.
When working on loose leash walking or just out for a walk with my dogs, I don't mind if my dog is sniffing, looking around, or just being a dog. Sniffing is mentally stimulating to dogs. What I mind is when the dog decides to pull me into a bush or something. I just want a calm, nice, loose leash walk. Now that your dog is understanding to follow you and give eye contact, start walking forwards. If you alternate between going backward and forward, you are more unpredictable to your dog and your dog will be more likely to pay attention to you. Training tips. When working around distractions, make sure the dog is able to think and concentrate. If the dog seems too distracted, stressed, or worried, make changes that will help your dog succeed. If it's another dog that your dog is worried about, create more distance between your dog and the other dog. Move far enough away so that your dog can concentrate and learn. This is called working below threshold. Once he is fine at that distance, move closer to the other dog or distraction. Take your time. Do not be in a hurry to walk right next to that other dog. Go at your dog's pace. If you are taking a class and there is a spider next to you and you are scared to death of spiders, do you think you would be able to listen to the instructor and be able to learn? Chances are you would be too worried about the spider, keeping your eye on it and not able to concentrate or learn what you are being taught. This happens to our dogs all the time. We expect them to loose leash walk, stay, or do their tricks in places that are too stressful for them. Take your time. If your dog is failing, look at the environment and see if there is something that could be affecting the training session. Maybe you are stressed about something in the environment. Your dog will pick up on that and be stressed too. Make sure you use a high value reward when the distractions or environment might be too much for your dog. If your dog is fearful, shy, or aggressive, set up training scenarios in which your dog can be successful. Loose leash walking and varying the reinforcement. Reinforcement schedules. Fixed interval, the first correct response after a set amount of time has passed is reinforced. The time period is always the same. Variable interval. The first correct response after a certain amount of time has passed is reinforced. After the reinforcement, a new time period is set. Fixed ratio. A reinforcer is given after a specified number of correct responses, more like a one-to-one -one ratio. This schedule is best for learning a new behavior. Variable ratio. A reinforcer is given after a set number of correct responses. 
After reinforcement, the number of correct responses necessary for the reinforcement changes. This schedule is best for maintaining behaviors, the slot machine effect. Now that your dog understands that being next to your side is a rewarding place to be, you can start to vary the rate of reinforcement. This means that instead of giving a treat after every step, you are going to start rewarding at random times, sometimes after 1, 2, 8, 4, or even 10 steps, etc. If you notice that after a certain amount of steps your dog is starting to pull, then make your reinforcement more random. You do not want your dog to get into a pattern. Be unpredictable, but keep increasing your criteria and ask for more at times. Why should you vary your reinforcement? It will help build a strong, solid, reliable behavior. You will become unpredictable. Your dog will not get bored. What should you vary? Rewards. Switch out the type of rewards often. Put multiple types of food rewards in one bag, and when your dog gets rewarded, he will not know what it will be. The dog thinks, will it be the grilled chicken, kibble, green bean, or roast beef? Vary the length of the behavior performed, and in this case, it would be the amount of steps taken before a click and a treat. Vary the speed at which you move. Vary the direction you move in. Vary the amount of food given for a reward. If the dog did an amazing job, give him a jackpot. A jackpot is about 10 treats given one at a time as you tell the dog how amazing he is. A jackpot can also be given if you use toys, by playing longer or tossing the ball multiple times. Vary the rate of reinforcement. Vary the reward and bounce between rewarding with toys and food. Vary your verbal praise. A simple good boy might mean the dog is doing good and to keep it up. A yahaha ha or woohoo might mean the dog is doing an outstanding job and keep it up or you might get a reward. Adding distractions. Boy. Start with one distraction and add more as your dog is successful. If your dog is too distracted, like my puppy is in this next clip, go back to easier exercises to help your dog generalize the behavior. As you can see, he's distracted by the toys. He's not pulling me, but this is not really a loose leash walking or being calm on a walk. It's kind of frantic, so I would definitely want to go back a step and set him up for success. Since Twix was too distracted, I went back to exercise one and placed the treats on the ground. Now that I've gone back a step to placing food on the ground, he's much more calm 
He's not frantic, looking around, and I can continue teaching him to loose leash walk. Once Twix was having success with exercise one around distractions, I went to exercise two, which is food to the mouth, and then started varying my reinforcement. Now he has much better focus around all the distractions. Add distractions slowly. If your dog is not getting it, go back a step or use better rewards. Remember that your dog can have on and off days. Do not get frustrated and hang in there. I personally want my dogs to view distractions as opportunities for rewards and to learn to be calm around distractions. Add a variety of distractions, food, toys, dogs, people, and things. At the end of this DVD, you will be given some challenges to help you proof your dog's loose leash walking skills. Bloopers starring Twix at nine months.
Loose leash walking around running kids. Once your dog knows how to loose leash walk, you can proof the behavior. This was Isabel's first time loose leash walking around kids running. So to set her up for success, I made sure to reinforce her right away for doing a great job. I also told her what a good girl she was and gave her a lot of verbal praise. It is all about making sure the dog is successful. It is not about being macho and getting upset or yelling if the dog makes a mistake. That does not help them through the challenge. It only causes the dog stress and affects the human-canine relationship. Loose leash walking, parallel walking with another dog. If the dogs are too distracted by another dog walking next to them, add more space in between the dogs. Have a person walk in the middle of the two dogs. Place barriers in between. Puppy exercise pens with blankets draped over work really well. Training tips. Go at the dog's pace and slowly work closer and closer to the other dog. Do not force your dog to walk next to another dog if they do not want to. If one dog reacts to the other dog by barking, lunging, or growling, then create more distance between the dogs and use barriers such as cars or people to make the walk less stressful for the reactive dog. Keep training sessions short. End on a positive. Encourage your dog by talking to him in a nice tone and telling him what a great dog he is. Use treats, petting, calm voice, and allow the dog to sniff a bush as a reward. Vary the rate of reinforcement as well as the type of reinforcement. One time reward with a piece of food, the next with a calm pat on the side, and another time by sniffing a bush. Be unpredictable. Loose leash walking face to face. Training tips. Walking face to face with another dog is intimidating to most dogs. 
Start with a lot of space in between the dogs. Use barriers. Slowly move closer to the other dog, but do not rush it. Go at the dog's pace. The dogs will let you know if they are too close for comfort. To ensure that the dogs feel comfortable, you could start with large curving patterns when passing the other dogs face to face and slowly moving closer and closer. It's always best to set the dog up to succeed. Keep training sessions short. Use high value rewards, especially in the beginning stages of this exercise. Loose leash walking following another dog. Sometimes a dog will be more comfortable following another dog. I think that it is important for the dog to be able to get to know the other dog through the scent and eventually be confident enough to walk face to face. It might take many sessions of following a dog before the dog is able to walk face to face. Always go at the dog's pace. If the dog reacts by lunging, barking, or growling, go back to an easier exercise. Sometimes just creating more distance between dogs helps. Every dog is different. Find what works for your dog and build from there. Please keep in mind that this is just my professional opinion based on my working with many dogs. Loose Leash Walking Challenges Loose Leash Walking Holding a Cup of Water
loose leash walking holding an egg on a spoon. Loose-leash walking, walking past cat food in a dish. Loose leash walking, 
walking past a water bottle. Loose leash walking up and down stairs. Even though this is a challenge, it is still important to set your dog up for success. Twix really wanted to run up the stairs, so I needed to slow him down. I went back to step one and started reinforcing on the ground. This way, he was successful and able to make it up the stairs. My next step would be going to step two and feeding him directly to his mouth. He wasn't ready for this step, so I just continued with clicking and treating on the ground. Step two, food to the mouth, now that Twix has the hang of it. Loose leash walking up and down a ramp.
Training Tips These exercises could be used in group classes once the dogs have learned to loose leash walk. Use these exercises to test your dog's loose leash walking skills. I show these exercises with my advanced dogs in addition to my puppy. When working with a puppy or a dog that is not that good at loose leash walking yet, make sure to give him plenty of reinforcement. Go back a step and set the dog up for success. Many times I had to go back to rewarding on the ground or rewarding directly to Twix's mouth. Remember that every time you change the environment, you may need to go back a few steps and start from there until the dog generalizes the behavior in all situations. Bloopers, starring Twix at nine months. <laughs> You're gonna make it interesting. Hi. <laughs> the loose leash walking obstacle course. Practice loose leash walking around all the items separately to ensure your dog will succeed. Now that your dog can walk on a loose leash around various things, try setting up an obstacle course. This is also a lot of fun to do in group dog training classes. Some things you could use. Clothes, shoes, water, food bowl, trash can, people, treats, toys, backpacks, stairs, ramps, cat food, agility equipment. Use anything that could possibly be a distraction. You can have items that represent things that could kill a dog to show the importance of dog training. Imaginary items. Do not actually use these items as you do not want to take the chance with your dog or a client's dog. Antifreeze, water bowl with water to simulate antifreeze. Chocolate bars, wrappers of chocolate bars. Remember, you should always set your dog up for success. Thank you to all my middle school students that helped me with this section of my DVD. They are all really amazing kids. On your second or third time through the course, try to not use any food. You can use your positive interrupter and encouragement to prevent your dog from pulling.
teaching the heel and side position. Step one, click and treat the dog when he puts his front paws on the box. Step two, lure the dog with a piece of food, but with his head facing slightly away from you. As the dog's head moves away from you, the rear end will swing in towards you. When the dog touches your leg, click and treat. Step three, move away slightly, and if your dog moves in to touch your leg, click and treat. If he does not, just lure again to get him in the right position. Step four, practice going both directions to make sure the dog has balanced, strong hind end muscles. Training tip, luring the dog's head away from you will cause the dog to move his rear end towards you. Training tips, do not put it on cue yet. The dog is just learning the position. Wait until you've faded the box and are doing this exercise on the ground. When you do put it on cue, I would suggest to use a different cue for each side. My cues are heel and side. Fade out the food lure. You could use your hand as a target for the dog to follow, but get the food out of your hand. Click and treat when the dog follows the hand, then feed from the pouch or pocket. Now fade the hand completely and only click and treat when the dog is in the proper position. If the dog is not in the exact position you want, you can click and treat when the dog makes some effort and moves towards your leg or heel position. Eventually you will need to only click and treat the best responses. Increasing your criteria is extremely important to build and shape the behavior to look how you want it to look. Increasing your criteria too quickly can cause the behavior to break down. If your behavior seems to break down, just go back and retrain a few steps. It is not the end of the world if you have to retrain something. Just keep pressing on and do not get frustrated. Training a dog to heal is a process. Building a solid foundation will pay off in the end. Fade out the object. Step 1, start on a higher object. Step 2, change to a lower object. Step 3, remove object completely. If the behavior breaks down, go back to using the object again, but do not get stuck using it. This is more of a reminder to the dog and then remove the object again. Your leg will be the new target.
If you are working on this for canine freestyle, try the same exercise with the dog learning to move in both directions between your legs. Now that you have faded the object, move in all directions to let your dog find the heel and side position. Forward in a straight line starting one step at a time. Backward in a straight line starting one step at a time. Sideways with the dog in the heel or side position moving away from your dog. Click and treat when the dog moves to the proper position. Forward circle moving right. Forward circle moving left. Backward circle moving left. Backward circle moving right. For canine freestyle, middle position moving forward, backward, right circles, and left circles. Once your dog can find the position, start increasing the amount of steps you take. Increase slowly. Keep your training sessions short. If you move too quickly and your dog fails, 1. Failure is your friend. 2. Failure reveals gaps in your training and provides you with feedback. 3. It is your responsibility to fix the gap, rework your training plan, and set your dog up to succeed. 4. It is not the dog's fault. As Steve White says, the dog is always right. The chair exercise. Create your own patterns with the chairs. 
Keep in mind that when the dog is on the outside, he has to move faster to keep up. Also, left turns can be challenging if the dog is in your way. If this happens, go back and reinforce the dog for being in the proper position. If you want a prancing type heel, make sure you feed with the dog's head up. In other words, feed in the position that you want. Reward with the legs coming off the ground. A high head will get the legs high and the result will be a prance. Find the proper speed at which to walk that will get the dog to lift his legs up. This will vary from dog to dog. Now you can use the heel inside position to train more advanced tricks. Use a hallway or barriers to get the dog to back up straight when in the heel position. Make sure that you start proofing the behavior once the dog knows it. Today I'm going to help you train your dog to give you attention without asking for it by simply waiting until they look at you. First, you're going to have your dog on a leash while you are sitting. Second, every time he looks at you, click and toss a piece of food and then just repeat the process.
The idea is to toss the treat far enough away so the dog has to actually turn away from you, get the treat, and the only way for them to get another one is to watch you, which is the name of the game, the watch me game. They watch you, you click toss another treat, and then the game continues. Repeat while standing. Once the dog gets good at reorientating to you, you can hold out for longer eye contact and click in. In the beginning, when you first start playing this game, make sure that you're in a very low distraction area. Maybe your kitchen, your living room, somewhere where the dog is very comfortable. Once your dog starts getting really good at the game, then you can start adding distractions. Make sure you add them slowly. Also, when you decide it's time to take off the leash, go back to your kitchen, your living room, or where you started teaching the game, and go from there, adding the distractions, changing the environment. You can also start to move around and see if the dog can watch you as you're moving. Awesome. Okay. In no time, your dog will figure out that looking at you earns him a reward. So now your next step is loose leash walking. Loose leash walking with eye contact and focus. Start by walking backwards. When the dog looks at you, click and treat. Repeat until you're getting 100% focus. Start in your house or somewhere without distractions. Make sure you have a loose leash. Now you're going to walk sideways. When your dog is looking at you, click and treat. Repeat until you're getting 100% focus.
Now you're going to walk forward. When your dog is looking at you, click and treat. Repeat until you are getting 100% focus and have a loose leash. Tips. Stick with each level until you have 100% focus from your dog. Make sure the leash is loose. Be sure to have a high rate of reinforcement when training each level. Do not be stingy when it comes to rewarding your dog. Loose leash walking, adding toy distractions. Just like in my loose leash walking video, Start by walking backward, then sideways, and finally forward. Always start with one distraction, and then when your dog is successful with that one, add another distraction. Remember to reward your dog when they are calmly walking over the distractions. One of the main focuses of this exercise is to make sure that the dog could really care less about the distraction. That all the dog cares about is following you and paying attention to you. And those distractions are no big deal. Don't forget to reward your dog when they make a good decision. That was a really good decision for Bandit to not play with that toy. It's harder, huh? I know, it's harder. If your dog does not care about toys, you could always use food on the ground, have a person sitting on the ground and walk past them. Anything your dog's distracted by. Using loose leash walking to calm a dog around high level distractions. Once you've taught loose leash walking, you can use your loose leash walking skills to help you teach your dog to be calm around things that may have normally caused over arousal.
boy. If your dog is over his threshold, then you have a few options. Move further away from the distraction. Try better, tastier treats. Lead and try another day. Practice around less distracting things more often. Ten week old puppy's first loose leash walking training session. was in a classroom full of middle school students. The puppy and kids did outstanding. When you're working loose leash walking, you're going to click before, so you're going to click and put the food down right where the dog is next to you. Next to your side, the very first step, the second step, 
when they get a little bit older, you could... I could reward right to his mouth. So I could reward to his mouth as 